Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, we're gonna give you five tips for choosing the best plants at the nursery. We definitely grow most all of our peppers from seed, but growing from seed isn't for everyone, and we definitely peruse the nurseries quite a bit this time of year. But nurseries have their tricks to get you to buy the plants that you might not otherwise buy, so we're gonna to try to give you some practical advice to get the best possible plants. And most of these tips will apply to other plants as well, not just peppers. So getting right into it, the first tip is to buy at the right time. Nurseries tend to get their pepper plants and tomatoes and other warm season crops pretty early in the season, well before they're safe to put outside. Yeah, it's definitely very tempting to immediately purchase these plants as soon as they have them readily available, but your overnight temps might still be freezing and they might not be ready to go outside yet. So you want to wait until it's safe to transplant the plants outside. You pretty much want to bring them home, maybe harden them off for a day or two, and then get them outdoors. The next tip for picking really good seedlings at the nursery is often overlooked. It's very tempting to buy the biggest plant, but you actually want to choose the small, tender, young plants that are more likely to take off because they're in the active growth stage. So you want to avoid the larger seedlings that have likely outgrown their pots. Definitely go for the smaller ones as opposed to the tall, leggy ones. This is a pretty good example right here. You can see this small seedling and this massive plant here. This one's probably a little bit overgrown and should have been transplanted maybe a week ago, whereas this one is still actively growing into the soil and will have a better time acclimating once it's transplanted. Another thing related to this same topic is you wanna kind of avoid spindly young plants. That's not really what we mean by young and vigorous. If you see things like this, where it's sort of lanky and the stem is very thin, try to find plants that are a little bit more low and sturdy looking. The next tip for choosing good plants from the nursery is to avoid plants that have lots of flower buds on them or even early fruits. Yeah, nurseries definitely tend to put their biggest plants on display. Some of them are already flowering because people tend to gravitate towards those plants as opposed to the smaller ones. It can be really tempting if you see a small bell pepper forming on a plant this size or smaller, but that's really only gonna set your plants back when you get them into the garden. If you do end up with plants that have flowers or even peppers, it's okay. You just wanna remove them for a few weeks after you've transplanted. And definitely remove the early peppers. This will give them the proper time they need to establish in the garden and you'll have better yields later on in the season. The next tip for choosing seedlings at the nursery is to take a really good look at the foliage. You wanna make sure that the foliage is very green and healthy and avoid anything that has brown or black spots or yellowing of the leaves. You want signs of healthy new growth and you wanna make sure you avoid anything that looks like it might have a disease. Also be sure to take a really good look at the plant and make sure that you don't see any pests. Check underneath the leaves, check the stems, look for any pest damage or any signs that they might have an active infestation. We found that pest issues are more common in greenhouse settings, so covered indoor spaces. We've definitely brought home with us aphids and thrips. Uh, it's really common, unfortunately, in nursery settings because it's really hard to control these pests. If you do happen to bring home a seedling that is infested with pests, it's not the end of the world. Just avoid bringing them inside your house, make sure you put them in the garden right away, and you can treat it if necessary. And the last tip when choosing your peppers from the nursery is to check the root system. Just like you would at transplanting time, you can gently remove the root system from the pot that it's in and take a look at the roots. And what you wanna see are nice, healthy white roots reaching the bottom, but not starting to encircle the pot, which would indicate a root bound plant that has overgrown its container. You can also take a look at the bottom of the container. If you notice excessive roots growing out the bottom, it's a good sign that the plant has overgrown that container. However, if you notice a few roots here or there, that's perfectly fine. You definitely don't wanna see browning or any slimy roots. That's an indication of root rot or that the plant has been overwatered. So even though we grow most of our peppers from seed, it's not for everyone and it definitely saves some time and energy by buying started plants from the store or if anything goes wrong with your seed started plants inside. So if you've been to the nursery this year, let us know what you decided to purchase for the garden. There's definitely some questionable pepper varieties available sometimes, so we do enjoy going from time to time. And there's always room in the garden for more plants, right? Thanks so much for watching Pepper Geek and we'll see you next time.